Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware and today I want to go over a really, really simple task, you could call it an easy trick, to actually save yourself a little bit of thermal headroom when you're throwing together a system, especially if you're using the stock included cooler with your CPU. In this case, I'm using a Ryzen 5 1600 AF with the uh, Wraith Stealth cooler and uh, you may be aware the Wraith Stealth cooler is not the best cooler out there on the market and especially when it's put into a case like the Cooler Master uh, Q300L, I believe is the model number of the case, which doesn't have great airflow. So temperatures are fairly high, and this trick will at least allow you to lower temperatures a little bit or just get a little bit more performance out of your CPU because it's throttling back a little bit less based on those temperatures. So let's just go ahead and talk about what it is that I'm talking about. Now, of course, I'm talking about undervolting your CPU. For those of you that don't know, uh, maybe you've heard of overclocking if you've never really gone into the BIOS of your PC and checked out what all those settings are. There are voltages for the CPU. Of course, if you're overclocking, a lot of the time what you'll hear people talk about is uh, setting a specific voltage or maybe a voltage offset to get clock speeds a little bit higher. But today's goal is a little bit different than that. We're actually just trying to save a little bit on our temperature temperature budget and by doing that we're actually going to see clock speeds stabilize at a slightly higher level with this Ryzen 5 1600 AF at least that is the theory behind it. So basically today to save a little bit on the temperature headroom that my CPU has I'm going to lower the voltage uh, while still maintaining a perfectly stable auto clock. I'm letting the motherboard handle clock speeds and everything like that. The only thing I'm touching is the voltage itself. So this is all good in theory but of course it all comes down to the actual testing of it, whether I can actually save temperature, get higher clock speeds, that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and hop over to the testing to see just what I can do with the uh, voltage offset. So we've been running Cinebench R20 for several runs now. We have a sort of stabilized clock speed at about 3.2 gigahertz. Sometimes it dips a little bit lower than that. The temperature is also stabilized around 67, 68 degrees right now, sort of in that upper 60s range. And then the voltage seems to have stabilized anywhere from 1.15 to 1.17. It's sort of bouncing around in that general area but everything is sort of stable on the system right now. I'm gonna keep letting it go just to make sure that temperature is not gonna creep a little bit higher, but then we're gonna see how dropping the voltage affects not just the clock speed or the temperature or the voltage obviously itself, but also I'm curious if this Cinebench score changes whatsoever or if we're gonna be basically getting the exact same performance. Now, what we would ideally like to see is by dropping voltage in this scenario with such a uh, low TDP cooler, we would like to see the temperatures come down a little bit and therefore keep the clock speeds a little bit higher than uh, they might be uh, keeping right now with the Wraith Stealth cooler. So we're going to see how this all works out once we drop the voltage by about 0.1 volts. So Cinebench has been running for around 10 minutes now, and I do want to go over some of the numbers because they are interesting. Our temperature is about identical to what it was beforehand. We're seeing 68, 69 degrees, that upper 60s range. Voltage is obviously a little bit lower since we did set a negative offset voltage, but what's interesting is the clock speed is stable at a slightly higher amount than it was previous. Now, that's an important point because we're actually getting more performance now out of a CPU by actually dropping the auto voltage down a little bit and letting everything still behave completely normally. And now if you're wondering how that translates to the actual Cinebench scores, we are seeing slightly higher scores there as well. We're now seeing scores of, uh, we have 2493 listed right now. And here in a second, we're gonna finish up another run so we can probably uh, see another updated score there. And there we see 2483. Now I have to go back and look because off the top of my head, I knew it was in the 2400 range. I just don't know exactly what the number was before the offset voltage. But what I'm gonna do now is drop the voltage down to about negative 0.2 volts and basically run the exact same test and see where we land. So 
So here we are once again, and we're seeing that the temperature remains right in that upper 60s range. Our clock speed is stable above 3.2 gigahertz. We're seeing voltages obviously just slightly lower. Now, obviously with the BIOS, I was not able to go to negative 0.2 volts. It just wasn't stable, it wouldn't boot. So we're actually at something like negative 0.125 volts or something like that was what I got stable at. But what I want you to notice here is the actual Cinebench score is 2550, which is again a little bit higher than it was when I had just the uh, roughly negative 0.1 voltage offset. So we're seeing not so much lower temperatures right now, but we're seeing higher clock speeds because we're getting a higher boost to get us up to that threshold of the upper 60s. So why this all matters is when you have really bad airflow in a case or just rocking a really weak cooler like the Wraith Stealth Cooler, you can actually drop the voltage down and leave everything else at stock and you're gonna get yourself either a little bit extra performance, maybe a little bit extra thermal headroom or some sort of combination of those two things. Now, as a bit of an afterthought, I did throw together this chart just so you could kind of see after the uh, temperature stabilized with the voltage offsets, what we actually saw with the Cinebench R20 score. So I basically just pulled the uh, last Cinebench R20 run that I had in each of my uh, sort of testings. And here's the scores. We're not seeing a huge difference, obviously, but we are seeing a little bit of a performance gain at the same, if not slightly lower temperatures, depending on which voltage offset you're talking about. So we are absolutely seeing a very modest, but definitely there, uh, gain in performance by lowering the voltage on stock clocks here. And this is absolutely not a premium motherboard. This is the uh, really one of the cheapest B450 motherboards out there. This is the Gigabyte B450M DS3H, I believe is the model number, but uh, retails normally for the low $70 range, 72, 73 ish. Normally I'll put it down below in case you want to check current pricing on it because it is a very affordable motherboard but we do see a performance gain by actually dropping the voltage. And I guess this really just brings us into the very simple conclusion, and that is if you are struggling with temperatures, uh, being right there on the line of what you would consider acceptable or not acceptable, lowering the voltage and letting everything else still remain stock is a really great way to potentially save yourself a little bit in the temperature department, give yourself a little bit more headroom there. Now, there's no guarantee that this is gonna work on every motherboard CPU combination out there obviously if you're working with a pre-built system then it's much more likely that you're not going to be able to do anything with those voltages in the bios so this is just one motherboard cpu configuration that you can try this on of course if you have different cpu motherboard configurations this may or may not work the only real way to know 100 especially if you do have that pre-built pc is to hop into the bios and check out what settings are available to you but if it's available it's a great way to save a little bit on your temperature budget. With all that being said, let me know what you guys think about undervolting. Is this something that you do with your own system? And if you are somebody that undervolts, let us know your configuration and why you're undervolting and sort of uh, what your results are in those comments down below. And of course, if you like the video, give this video a like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Who's Your Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.